Cemetery, two crosses bear the names of two distinguished Canadian soldiers who died on duty. They are those of Major General Harry Leonard Noel Salmon and Lieutenant Colonel Charles Francis Jeffrey Finlay, who were killed in an air crash in southwest England. Lieutenant Generals McNaughton and Creerer and many other senior Canadian officers were present to salute in farewell two comrades we can ill afford to lose. General Salmon was born in Winnipeg and won the military cross and bar in the last war. Between wars, he was an RCR and general staff officer. In this war, he commanded the Hastings and Prince Edward Regiment, was later a brigadier and a divisional GOC. Colonel Finlay came from Niagara Falls and was born in Stamford, Ontario. A graduate of Queen's University, Kingston, he worked in finance and manufacturing. He came overseas in 1939 as a lieutenant with the Canadian Divisional Supply Column, Royal Canadian Army Service Corps, and rapidly won promotion to become A and QMG Canadian Planning Staff. Relatives in Britain joined with Canadian officers in the impressive and memorable ceremony in a corner of the Great British Cemetery where Canadian crosses, row on row, reach back a generation to that other great war. On this day, Canadian soldiers again salute Canada's immortal dead. Canadian Minister to the Allied Governments, inspected French Canadian units, he began his tour with the Royal 22nd, his former unit, the fighting Van Dues of last war fame. Later, with Lieutenant General McNaughton, he visited the 3rd Battalion Royal Canadian Engineers, a completely French Canadian unit. The sappers marched past with real verve and style, showing a parade ground smartness quite on a par with their technical skill. There were many demonstrations. A bomb disposal squad showed its technique in one of the most dangerous and treacherous tasks that falls to the lot of the engineers. After the inspection, the battalion gathered around while General Vanier addressed them informally. The unit comes not only from the province of Quebec, but from all parts of Canada, an example of French Canada's unity and determination to see the war to a speedy end. When the FMR marched past, General Vanier saw before him battle-scarred veterans of Dieppe, hard, young veterans whose one ambition is to get back to France and finish the job. There was action aplenty when an anti-tank battery, RCA, took its tank-busting six-pounders to the ranges. This is the gun that blasted the German 60-ton Tiger tank right out of North Africa. Now, Canadian gun crews are getting ready to blast it right out of Europe. The job of the anti-tank gunner is one of the toughest and most important in modern warfare. Working far forward and often without adequate protection, it is his responsibility to see that enemy armor is well and truly smashed. Battle experience has shown that in the hands of resolute and well-trained gun crews, the six-pounder is the master of any armor the Germans can put against us. Right Honourable Malcolm MacDonald, British High Commissioner to Canada, saw the fighting might of a Canadian armoured regiment when the Governor-General's Horse Guards passed in review. He was inspecting the 5th Division, 
and later saw divisional engineers clearing a minefield for advancing tanks to pass through. It was a realistic demonstration carried out under air attack. When the area was cleared, the tanks came through. They were carrying improvised tank assault bridges to overcome a deep anti-tank ditch which stood in their path. No obstacles could stop them, and they went on to overcome enemy strong points. The High Commissioner was greatly impressed with what he saw, particularly with his own private minefield. This sort of training should be pretty useful in fearing political minefields, too. On May 7, 1943, Her Majesty the Queen paid visits to two famous regiments of which she is Colonel-in-Chief. First, she saw the Black Watch, Royal Highland Regiment of Canada, senior of Canada's many Highland units and senior of the various Dominion units allied to the parent Black Watch. With Lieutenant Colonel S.S.T. Cantley, the officer commanding, the Queen passed along the ranks of the battalion, stopping to chat with the men and winning all hearts with her charm and grace. Then the battalion marched past with faultless precision, a regiment proud indeed of its old traditions and waiting for the day when it will add to them. The Queen's standard broke out once again when Her Majesty visited the Toronto Scottish. Here was another famous Canadian unit, allied to an equally famous British regiment, the London Scottish, itself allied to the Gordon Highlands. The Toronto Scottish is unique in being the only Canadian unit allied to a British territorial regiment. Accompanied by the commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel E.G. Johnson, Her Majesty inspected the troops. In the grounds of a 500-year-old estate, the Toronto Scots marched past their Colonel-in-Chief with the easy swing of veteran troops. And so the Queen departed, leaving behind a memory of gracious dignity, which her soldiers will long cherish. Squadron leader Blake Wood of Toronto gives final instructions to Flying Officer D.M. Bitsy Grant of Calgary and Flying Officer J.A. Morton as they prepare for another day's work. While Morton's aircraft is made ready to act as Grant's weaver to protect him from rear attack, these men are ace pilots of an RCAF Army Co-op Squadron who have been scoring big hits in train busting operations against the enemy. Train busting on a preconceived plan has ceased to be a hit and miss proposition and has assumed vital importance, paralyzing enemy controlled rail traffic, creating an engine shortage, and in general, putting a real crimp in Germany's war effort. These operational films, supplied by the RCAF film unit to the Canadian Army newsreel and released here for the first time anywhere, show a routine day's work in the life of Betsy Grant and the other pilots in his squadron. Yes, Joe, you're right, they're Mustangs. Target for today, Tally Ho, or whatever they say in the Air Force. Here we go again. minutes, Bitsy Grant sent nine Hitner-operated locomotives to the repair shops or the junkyard. Industry is hampered, troop movements disorganized, supply lines in chaos. It's just one more task in the very day of the Army Co-op pilots, but it's certainly a day well spent. Mm -hmm. 